All right, guys, welcome. It is finally October. Um, I want to start out by saying that I understand September was hard, but we, it's in the past now. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't change it. All we can do is refocus on what we're trying to create in our lives, with our businesses, and our fitness, and move forward. So today, I just ask you to wipe yourself clean of whatever happened in September, and that we um, step into October with you know, faith and hope that everything is going to be amazing because we have a launch this month. So that's exciting. All right, guys. So we're going to review the lessons. Um, Lara, I shared an image in the thread of the planner. Like I wrote today, I haven't ordered all the planners um, because honestly, I don't think everybody's using them. And I'm, I want you to look at it and tell me if it's something that you're going to commit to because I'm not just going to keep buying them if no one's going to use them. So all right, so let's I usually use a little spiral book, so. Okay. And I use my phone. Okay, well, we're gonna review anyway the planner we've been buying and I shared the image of it. Just take a look at it. If it's something you're okay. interested in, then. Um, okay, so we're gonna review uh, this week's lessons and then uh, Susie's gonna review how to use the planner. Okay, so this week we talked about goal setting. Very, very important. Um, I have to, you know, I always use this analogy because I think it's, it makes it more real. When the purpose of goal settings is so that you actually have a purpose. So you know where you're headed in your life. And that goes for everything. Um, it's like going on a vacation, on a trip. Let's say you want to go to California, but you don't know when you're leaving. You don't know how you're getting there. Plane, train. Uh, are you walking? Are you running? Are you going on a motorcycle? When are you coming back? What are you doing there? That's the same. To me, it's the same as not having a, a plan or a goal that you're working towards because then you're just meandering. You're just wasting time. There's no or treading water. You're not really working towards anything specific. So um, it's important. I know goals can be scary, right? Because I think our gut instinct, maybe it's because humans are trained to think of all the bad things that can happen. Um, is that you're gonna think, yeah, but if I set a goal for diamond, for instance, and I, and I don't hit that date, then that's it, I have failed. And that's, that's what we need to resist because you need to have something to work towards. If you're not emerald, then set the date to hit emerald. I mean, that's the first step. Um, setting the, uh, a very specific deadline on that because you're gonna then push towards it. Having a specific date towards diamond is another one because you're going to work towards it. Now, if you're just like, well, you know, someday I'll hit diamond, you're never going to do it. There's no urgency. There's no drive. There's no action that you're putting behind it. So it's really important to have clarity on what you're working towards, what it is that you want out of this business so that then you can reverse engineer it and create the steps. Um, reverse engineering to me is it's like when I wanted to hit $50 um, a week when I first started, that was my initial income goal. Right off the bat, I had an income goal. And I knew that that number, I could, I could break it down into steps. So the first thing is, yeah, $50 a week is like making two sales. So I knew, okay, I have to make two sales per week. That means I have to talk to a lot of people. To make two sales doesn't mean you talk to two people. It means that you got to talk to like 20 people. So if you're, and that's what I did. I created my list and I started talking to people. I started sending emails. I started talking to my coworkers, to all my family, just to make the two sales, to earn the $50 a week. It's the same for everything in this business. And, you know, every month, and I used to do this back when I was really, really looking to replace my income, like 2012, 2013. That's when I was like laser, laser focused. Every month, I took a little notebook from my office. I, I took it from them, one little spiral. And I had it with me all the time. And I would rewrite my goals on these sheets of paper every single month. I would rip it out and I would staple them together and I would put them inside my iPad because I had a, you know, those covers that closed. I put them in the iPad. That iPad went with me everywhere. And every time I opened the iPad, my goals were right there staring at me in the face. Hit success club by five by X date. It hit success of 10 by this date. 
Um, how many coaches do I want to bring in every single month? What kind of leader do I want to be? That was at the top of my goals every single month. And then the income producing activities, I had them all written down. Where do my coaches stand? Are they hitting success club? Who do I need to work with? Guys, I mean, the amount of detail that goes into building a big business, you, as a business owner, you have to track those things. And I was tracking them on a piece of paper every single month. But because of that, I knew how much money I wanted to make, that how much volume that equated to. That means I have to help my coaches hit success club because they're the ones driving those activities. Clarity. I know that it's a lot of detail right now, but if you're not Emerald, then I need you to start thinking about when you're gonna hit Emerald. If you haven't hit Success Club, then we need to set some specific dates so that you have something to work towards. But I mean, you gotta start talking to people because behind those goals is tons of action. So um, don't be afraid to set goals. Goals are we're are, are, are gonna push you out of your comfort zone, which is the next topic, and is going to help you elevate yourself and your business. Um, your comfort zone, let's face it, this business is all about being uncomfortable. We're going to have to do things that we don't like to do. We're going to have to do things that maybe feel natural. But the more that you do them, the more comfortable you get, the better you get at it. And that's how you start to really sharpen that, you know, the, the edge. And you learn how to speak to people. You know, you learn what to say, not to say. Guys, I made mistakes. I still do sometimes. At the beginning, I made a, a ton of mistakes. But you know what? All those mistakes, I wouldn't trade them for the world because mm -hmm. they taught me how to navigate conversations, how to say, well, oh, I really screwed that one up. I won't do that again. You know, I won't give them the price right off the bat. I won't do that again. You can't expect to just learn everything without doing first. And it takes getting outside your comfort zone every single day and being open to it. I understand, look, even when, and Susie too, all of us, all four of us and everybody in this group, no, none of us had social media experience before we came into this business, okay? We were just hosting our, our kids and stuff like that. But when you decide to become a business owner, you have to learn like, okay, now I got to switch things up. Now I have to learn to talk about things in my life, um, instances that maybe are uncomfortable so that I can inspire people into action. And that is just part of the game. And this business is all mental. That's why we are always preaching personal development. Um, and, and the more you do it, the more you accept that evolution is is necessary to succeed you will keep doing it like today i was listening and i did some stories on it you know and i don't know where everybody stands with faith or whatever but you know there is like a design there's a plan for your life right and it could be huge but you have to understand that even in success in business if you're not the person that is is open or even can receive that yet because your success is up here, but your growth is down here. And there has to be this evolution where you have to pour growth into yourself in order to get to be the leader that you are. Then, am I making sense? I'm yes. having trouble fitting it out. You have to grow to get to that level. And that takes getting outside your comfort zone and doing things that are uncomfortable and just feeding your mind constantly. Um, and it takes longer for some people than others. That's just the way it is. Okay, role as a coach, we already talked about all these things tied together, um, inviting. I think uh, this business, is, Susie I think said it last week, is not transactional. We're not here selling makeup or Tupperware or lipstick or hair products. I mean, I don't find those things very life-changing. Um, we're here, we're changing people's mindsets. We're dealing with weight loss, which is highly personal stuff. A lot of people have a lot of baggage when it's shame that comes with that. This is a people business and we have to lead with heart and we have to put that out there. People need to trust you and influence. And that comes from leading with heart and being very truthful and being the type of coach that you would want leading you. Yes. Once you once you bring someone in as a customer or as a coach or a discount coach, your job is just starting. 
We have to lead with heart. We have to put the relationships first. We're not here to sell something. It's not a one night stand. I say that all the time. It's not a one night stand. This is a marriage. You have a long term commitment to this person. Um, that's why we have to slow the conversations down. That's why we have to listen instead of talk, 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 talk. We need to listen to what people are saying so that we can provide the best value and, and, the, and the right products for their needs. Um, and always lead with, with, you know, like compassion. Um, so inviting is part of that. And we, we, we're gonna keep talking about inviting because it's so important. <laughs> but getting used to doing that and not just like trying to sell a challenge pack, but honestly just trying to lead with that love every day that you really truly want to help somebody change their life. So that is our role. Our role is to be hope dealers, to listen. Sometimes we wear a, a bazillion hats. Okay. Sometimes we're therapists and we're financial advisors and we're, you know, all kinds of things. Um, but we have to be open to truly wanting to help people because if you're just trying to sell products, then it's going to go a little bit, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. I'm telling you that right now, this is not just, uh, you know, one of those companies where you sell and go, it doesn't work that way. So always think, you know, how can I be that coach that I would want leading me right. and then pour heart, pour your, pour love into these people. And then the last two days, obviously tomorrow will be part two, but today it's about Shakeology. And I hope, I really, really, really hope that over the weekend, if you haven't been able to, is that you watch that video from Shea Stanford. That video is old as dirt, okay? I, that video came out like, woo, when I first started. She was like the uh, Shakeology queen because she really understood Shakeology. There's a lot of great points in that video. Um, I still use some of the things that she talks about in that video but what i want to say is don't like I, i'm going to say this so many times it's going to be ad nauseum people don't care about the, that you know the 70 ingredients in shakeology they don't care about that they care about what it means to you they care about your experience how it's helped you you know you know the ease of it that it's your your fast food because you don't maybe you stopped dining out in fast food places because now you just blend your shake and go um it's things that they can then take your words and say oh that makes sense in my life i can probably do that too so it's adding value um the, you're you're gonna get the the expensive objection and i'll let susie talk but she the way she poses it is it's something of you have to have confidence um in saying it but when people tell her that it's expensive she says expensive compared to what because it's priorities um people don't blink an eye dropping a grand on an iphone they'll be, even stand in line for three days and drop a grand on an iphone it's so stupid or they go and they don't have money, but then they drop 300 at Target. So is your health a priority? That's so being able to express these things with confidence, not being aggressive, but confident. Um, is It's showing people, educating people. We're not convincing, we're educating them on why Shakeology makes sense in their lives, how it'll help them get to that next level, that little edge. For me, Shakeology is health in a glass. It's exercise for your insides because you can work out your body as, you know, till you're blue in the face, but if your nutrition is crappy, your body is never gonna respond. And I believe that when you feel your body, your body's getting all these superfoods, you're getting all this awesome nutrition, the outside starts to flourish things mm -hmm. start to change. So for me, it's Shakeology is more than just superfood shake. It's really a powerful thing in my life. I know that my family is super healthy because of it. And, you know, for me, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. And because I feel like my health is a priority. And I don't know what tomorrow, I don't have any notes on tomorrow's thing, but it's Shakeology again. Yeah. Just, you know, I just want you to understand that it's confidence in the way you speak about the products and, and knowing your story. Like that's something that's really important because we're, we're storytellers um, and you have to re always remember when you're talking about the products, 
it, or the business is, you know, where were you before you started? Why did you even need it? Then, you know, the, okay, Shakeology came into your life. Okay, so what has it done for you? And, I, you know, maybe you need to make a list so that you'll, you can then verbalize it in different posts. But there's always has to be a story. Not just like, oh my gosh, I love it. I drink my shake every day. It has 70 ingredients. That's it. Like, why, why? Like, nobody, people are going to, that's like white noise. Um, you have to get in tune, maybe take notes, have a notepad where you can write all these things down to jog your memory. But um, it's a powerful tool and it is the bread and butter of our business, guys. That and, and the supplements, um, it's, it's a requirement for Success Club. I think that there's no way that you can talk to people about Shakeology if you're not experience, experiencing it yourself. And I think that's all I got. Susie, you want to add something? No, you nailed it. And I took notes since I know that there's not a lot of people like, you know, here right now present in case when they look at the recording, hopefully the chat, I don't know if it does come out, but either way you guys can screenshot it or whatever um because those are key things that becky said that i think you girls should absolutely jot down i wrote in the chat when she shared with me that she had her income goals after like five years i was like oh my gosh i never write down my income goals i'm always so focused on success club that i never really thought about doing the income goals and that's important because income speaks to me that's how i contribute to my household um, and then I wrote just like all the other goals that Becky does. And I love the way she would staple them because then you could look at your progress and you don't forget why you started this business and you don't forget where you're coming from. Like that to me was brilliant, which is why I decided to do the success of the bat and I did the spiral bound so I could look back at my year and see how have I progressed. So it's important that you track your business, especially if you consider yourself a business owner. Um, and so I, you know, I just wrote down mindset, making sure that we're growing, making sure that you're coaching the way that you would want to be coached. I wrote down all those key things that she just said. We're hope dealers. Share why it is that you do this. You know, people say it's expensive, but they'll drop money on shoes or a purse like that without even thinking about it twice. And Shakeology is working on your insides, which is then going to exude. It's going to, you know, you're going to radiate that help, that just all the stuff that you're, you, you, like, I find that this book from Autumn Calabrese has really been so impactful. I don't know if you girls are reading it, but let me tell you, when she said, you are what you eat, and I've probably heard it a million times, but I was like, oh my God, yes, my body responds better to clean foods. It's not even about how much. It's clean because if i'm eating junk all day my body reflects it but if i am eating clean foods even if i go over my container sometimes like becky tells me if you're gonna have extra veggies it's not gonna do anything to you and it's right because the body is totally thriving on the clean food so you are what you eat and that's what shakeology does all right so let's move on because today we want to go over the planner and if you girls are not using it and you want to find another system that's fine but I find that the income producing activities are here. So if you're not using the actual planner, I hope that you're using some sort of system that relates to this, because if you're not doing this, then you're not really moving your business forward. Income producing activities have to be done daily because that's exactly what they are. They're to move your income forward, your business forward. So at the very top, even if you don't have the planner, I think Becky shared what the sheets look like. We're going to go over, the fact that at the very beginning of your day, you should be focusing on your goals and your affirmations, right? Like she just talked about it, write down your goals. And your affirmations are about claiming. What do you want in your life? What do you wanna affirm? What do you wanna say this? It's like she talked about that vision, that roadmap. I write down every day, I am an elite coach because that's what I wanna get to. And then I write down, I'm a six figure earner because that's what I want to get to. So affirm your goals. And then gratitude for me is all about mindset and abundance. I remember Becky one time shared a story about, she said, if Carl right now were to take away Beachbody, how would you feel? Would you feel a lack of community? Would you feel a lack of accountability? Would you feel a lack of having that comfort that you can just go to any space in your home and work out? Think about it. 
you know, would you feel like if you would be at a loss with amazing clean products? So that's what that gratitude that that's where I think gratitude comes in. Every day I write down that I'm so thankful for my accountability partners, my success partners, you know, the fact that I can work out from home and I don't have to drive to a gym and there's nothing wrong with that. But just for me, that's the person that I am. So you want to like focus on that before you start working on your business. Even if you're going to work in pockets of time, get your mindset right. Next, it asks to do your top priorities. So I know we're busy guys. Becky talked about it. We wear so many hats, but at least every day have a priority of three things that are a non-negotiable. For me, it's absolutely doing the vital behaviors. It's connecting with people, right? I have to grow my network. If I don't get new eyes, imagine I'm preaching to the same choir and it's about inviting, asking people, this is what I have. This is my call to action. Join me. Right under that, it says add friends. So it's critical. Again, this is adding to your network. You have to be adding friends on Facebook. And if not, do it on Instagram. And I'm going to show you quickly how it is that I add friends on Instagram, because I think that that's a little bit more difficult. Whereas in Facebook, you just click, 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 click wherever you want. So on, on um, Instagram, what I do is I go to a place where I love to either shop or a place where I've been recently on vacation. Okay. So I open up my Instagram. Let's say that I want to go to a place where I shop and I will go into my favorite boutique. And when I go in there, I will click on their most recent um, post and I will look at the people that liked it. And when I go in there and I see the list of all the people that liked it, I kind of just go down through, you know, and I look at a, at a face and I'm like, oh, and I'll click on it. And if I see that they're, you know, like someone like me and we have some commonalities, I will go love on their posts. I will go look at their stories. And if I feel that I need to follow them, I will follow them. Let yes. me ask you a question. Sure. When you do that are, and they're, they're private, you just move on, right? I do move on. Um, unless if I'm like that day, like if I'm pressed for time and I don't have time, like if I'm not finding anyone that is public, I will then just go based on their face. If I'm pressed for time, I'll just go click, click, and I'll at least add five people because you never know. Behind that private page, there could be my soul sister. And if I don't take that chance, so I kind of play with it. Guys, and you can do that. Like, you know, she's saying a boutique because then, you know, if they have, you have similar styles with someone, then, you know, that's a commonality, but it could be a restaurant or yes. a brand or something that you like your your tribe of people are liking something that you like so yes like if you like it. planners go into your planner spot if you like home decor if you like reading go to the author like there's right. so many ways you know i mean this is crazy it's a world of people out there. it also forces you to look at you yourself and the things that you like because then you want to find people with the same interests sorry didn't you, mean to interrupt oh no, it's fine that's great and then you could also use that as content because right. if you find valuable stuff in the author that you want to go search, you know, you could even find like material there that you could be like, oh my gosh, yes, this is a, a content right here. This is a right. post that I could talk about. So it's awesome. Okay. So that's how I follow people. That's how I add friends. And that's so that I can get new eyes. And what I do is let's say that I just followed someone. I'll go straight to their stories because they're going to see that I'm watching their stories and hopefully they're going to come back and check me out. They're going to be like, oh, this girl's new watching my stories. Let me check her stories out, which is great because if we do a call to action, boom, right there, they're like, oh my gosh, she's you know hosting a boot camp or whatever. And trust me, they're not going to probably say yes right away, but at least they're going to be enticed by the material that you're giving. And I love when we throw value in our stories, they're going to want to keep coming back. I always talk about how Becky is always sharing recipes. Who wouldn't want to go back to look at simple little Step one, step two, step three, these are your ingredients. This is what you need to do. Boom, you got a meal together. You could even do that with fashion, girls. You could say, you know, this is what I'm going to wear. This is a top. These are the pants. These are the shoes. And then make it fun. Which one should I wear? You know, that's value, believe it or not. So that's how you add friends. Then connecting is going back to their page. So right now what I'll do is let's say that this girl that I just checked out in my boutique I'm like, oh my gosh, she's kind of cute. 
has a really cute, is wearing this really cute, look at that, a denim romper. That's freaking adorable. I would naturally be like, girl, smoking hot. Where did you get that romper, right? So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna connect with your people. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, which boutique did you get that at? I need that like for day night. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with connecting. If you're gonna scroll, do it intentionally. So I'll go in there and I'll do a comment like that. Okay, and that's what connecting is. You're connecting with another life, another girl that you would be like, oh, she's kind of cute. I'd love to have her on my boot camp or my team of coaches, right? I could see how her and I right there could talk about fashion. After that, you're going to follow up. You're going to create a list that this girl you want to constantly love on. Like when I look at her page, it's awesome. She's sharing her story of basically that she's at the beach having fun with friends. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to click on that picture of the romper. When you click on it, there's a little flag that comes out on the right side. Click on the flag and Instagram pops up with something that says save to collection, okay? When you click on the save to collection, I will create an album that says show love. And I will add her to that collection so that I know that every day when I want to go love on people during my connection time or my power hour, this is a girl that I want to look at her page every day. I want to look at her stories every day. I want to build that relationship. Guys, regardless, if I wasn't doing this for my business, I would probably still crush on her, right? Because that's what we do on social media. That's how we start crushing on our sister coaches. That's how I crush on my coach, Christy Delgado. I stopped her for a whole freaking year. Why? I kept going back to her page. She kept popping up, but then I would go look because I wanted what she has, what she had, and that's the goal. And I wasn't even a beach body coach then, and I was crushing on her. So this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to grow our business and our connections and our network and all that. So just add them to a collection. And then just go love on them every day. And if you don't want to love on them every day, that's fine. But the goal is to constantly visit their page so that they know that you are building that trust. All right. So that's where you can start having all your follow-ups is creating that collection. Next up, we have challenge invites. There's many ways that we could do this, ladies. We could do this by a call to action on your stories. You could purchase those really pretty um, visual stories that, you know, Hunk Digital sells or Mompreneur sells. They're like five bucks. You just get the stories and that's a call to action. Um, you know, it, it'll do those nice things where it says, you know, this new program is coming out. You know, I'm looking for 10 people or whatever. That's a challenge invite. You could do a direct message. Hey, girl. Or if you don't want to do the hey, girl, you know, you could even do it by name. Hey, Jen. You know, happy new month. It's October. I'm just reaching out because girlfriend, you know, I've been looking at your page and I am so excited to connect with you. I have this book coming out and I have a free sample workout. Would you like to try it and give me honest feedback? That's an invite. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're just saying, do you want to try my sample workout? Can you give me some feedback? Or you can invite them to your boot camp, or you could invite them to the coaching opportunity. If you have a sneak peek coming out, or you can invite them to the prayer. We're doing a prayer um, group every Wednesday and I've been bold and I post it and I'll go back and I'll be like, hey, we have a prayer group happening on Wednesdays at 8.30 in the morning. Want to join? It's free. You're adding value. But that's going to lead to a relationship. And it's great because then you get to talk about, oh my gosh, girl, wasn't that prayer journal or that prayer group fire today? These were my takeaways. Where were yours? Like, did that message speak to your soul? Oh my gosh, I felt God talking to me through Jessica today in her message. There's so much you could talk about. And that's adding free value and you're inviting them to challenges, challenges of boot camps, challenges of mentorship, challenges of your prayer, challenges to the sample workout. All the things, guys, all the things. Next up are the business invites. We talked about that. It's the same thing, the mentorship so if you want to differentiate and keep track of who you're inviting to your bootcamp, who you're inviting to your business, who are you inviting to the prayer journal, just because you could build upon that. And then the last one is recognition. 
Guys, we're in the business of celebrating. That's one of the vital behaviors is recognition. I could celebrate Alyssa today. She looks gorgeous with that braid. I never am brave enough to do the braid. I always feel comfortable with my hair down or that mommy ponytail. I could just post and be like, I was working today with Alyssa and she just lit a fire at me. I want to do a little braid. Like it could be anything. You know what I mean? Just share, recognize. Becky is great at recognizing other people all the time. Go to her stories and I guarantee you're going to be inspired to go celebrate the crap out of everybody because she's constantly doing it. I know that it makes me, and I always write to her and I'm like, oh my gosh, B, I have to do these stories. Like you're inspiring me. I just have to take the time. But yes, let's celebrate one another, your challengers, sister coaches, other people from the team. Celebrate a new book, celebrate an author, celebrate all the things. All right. At the very bottom of the planner, these are just basically little reminders, okay? And these are just kind of like the back kind of things, the unsexy things that we should be doing in our business. So on the left, we have a little box where it says social media. So they're just little reminders. Did you post in the morning? If not, do some stories in the morning, like starting your day. I know Lara talks about how she posts her stories before she gets to work. Smart, because you people wake up and that's the first thing that they see. You're there, you're reminding them, hey, do your workout or a motivational quote, whatever it is. At noon, if you have a lunch break or if you go to the restroom, take a minute. You could do something really cute in your stories like chugging my water on a, on a you know quick little minute break. Just remind her, drink your water, whatever it is. In the afternoon, when you get home from work, what are you doing? Are you prepping dinner? Are you doing homework with the kiddos? It takes 15 seconds to drop a story and just, oh my gosh, just got home and I'm super excited to get dinner done. I can't wait, I'm preparing beef stew, whatever. And then share a little picture of the recipe or whatever. In the evening before you go to bed, if it's family time, share that, you know? And then at the end, the healthy lifestyle call to action. Again, we should be doing call to actions all the time, whether it's to the challenge groups, the business, whatever it is, the 30 day breakaway, program launch, product launch, whatever. It's a call to action. Those are just little reminders to make sure you get it done. And then on the right, we have another little box that it says, check in, post in the groups. Ladies, your challenge groups are super critical. I'll tell you why. Those challengers are going to be hopefully lifers. And sometimes they fall off the wagon. And remember, I always say it, this is not a transactional business. It is a relational when they fall off the wagon, go back and find them, call them out. Make sure that you're adding value, you know, in your challenge group so that they know that you're still staying on phase one. You're still working on you. And there's so much power in that because people need reminders as well. Just because they bought the challenge back doesn't mean you forget about them, okay? So it's about checking into your challenge group, checking into a free group. Maybe you have a free group. Maybe it's a three-day group of just reminding people to drink their water or trying out Energize, sending out little free samples, whatever it is, add value there. Add value to your team pages. Do training calls. I know sometimes when I'm like super low on motivation, I'll go to the Beachbody Champions page and I'll click on the first training I see. And when I see their energy, that alone makes me like just say, oh my gosh, yes, I learned something new. Let me implement that on my business. So doing the little, you know, things like that absolutely help with continuing to learn and grow and add value to your business. All right. At the very, very bottom, they're just, again, more little reminders that you just should be doing on a daily non-negotiable. Checking your back office, your online office, that's critical, guys, because Number one, you want to see what your downline looks like. You want to see who's active, who's not. You want to, on Thursdays, check your pay, you know, your pay. Like, that's super motivational. You want to make sure that your success club points are correct. Guys, Beachbody can make mistakes too. So make sure that your points are updated. Make sure that, you know, you have all the things in place regarding qualifications or whatever. Don't be afraid to check that back office every day. You want to make sure that you're, commenting or sending message to people who are loving on your posts, right? People who are liking your posts, reach out. Hey, thank you so much for liking my post. You don't know how much value that gave me today. It was fuel. 
I was feeling kind of low and I'm so glad that I was able to reach you or that you supported me today. You know, I just want to reach out and say thanks. It's just that gratitude, that loving kindness, connection, all the things that we're doing to the people who are showing love on us. Kind of letting them know, hey, I see you. I see you. Thank you for taking the time to love on, on me. Then you want to interact in interest groups, right? This is critical, like building relationships with little groups that maybe have nothing to do with Beachbody or health and fitness. I'm in a Shih Tzu group and I love adding value there with my little doggy because I'm obsessed. So build relationships on that. Or maybe you're in a group that has to do with a book club. Whatever it is, add value there, build relationships there. Creating new content, yes, you should be making a list of things that you know really have inspired you or what you've been struggling with. At times it's okay to say, I'm struggling with this, how are you overcoming? Think of things that you could share that people will make or people will feel like, I wanna go back to her page. She has great content, she has great value, I'm learning, I'm being inspired, or I'm, she's helping me overcome, whatever it is, that's the kind of content you wanna provide. You want to make sure you're replying back to everybody who takes the time to love on your post. You want to comment at least on five people or more just scrolling. When I go on my Instagram and I just open it up, I literally take just five minutes to just scroll and I make sure that everybody I see there, I love with no expectation. No expectation. I'm just loving. I'm just building connections, relationships. I'm just letting them know I see you too. I'm empowering other people. Then I go back and I spend another five minutes like just trying to make sure that I'm helping my team, my coaches know that I'm supporting them too. So if I see that they did a post on their workout, I'm going to go low on their, their stuff too. Or if they're talking about homeschooling with their kids, I'm going to absolutely let them know, girl, I'm with you. That e-learning is a struggle, but we're getting through. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And then the last one is if somebody is working full time and you want to schedule your post, you can do that too. There's a couple of apps out there. I know one is called Planoly um, that you can just schedule your post in case if you're like really busy and you want to get a post out in the morning and at night, you can do that too. Um, so that's basically what this planner is. And the goal is to just get you in the habits of doing these daily actions. You could call it an action hour, you can call it a power hour, whatever it is, that's the goal of the plan. So if you, you know, stick to these income activity activities every day, you will promise you, you will see your business grow and move forward. All right, do you guys have questions? It's your 20 minutes. Thank you, Susie. That was amazing. You're welcome. I think that that planner shows you how much work really has to be done to push this business forward because I, it, that creates a funnel of people. And without that funnel, without a constant stream, you're going to have conversations in different um, at different stages. So you need to always be fostering new ones with the hopes that, yeah, at some point, maybe some will never mature. That's just the way it is. But if it's the law of numbers, I mean, it's ratios. You have to have, um, you have to increase your level of inviting, of connecting in order to get to those big numbers. So it, it's, it's part of the process. So what questions do you guys have? This is your time. Nothing? Come on, girls, don't be afraid. Um, I had a question. Yes. Um, it's actually has to do kind of with this week's call and last week's call. Susie, you had mentioned um, kind of you have like themes for each day of the week to kind of help you remember or get you kind of an idea yes. of what to post for the day. What were those again? Or are they somewhere where I can go back and find Yeah, them? no, I can, I can share them with you now. So on Monday... I try to always think of mindset. How do people want to start their Monday? Usually it's with some type of motivation. So I'll think, like, I'll try to do a post that has to do with that. Um, 
And of course, this doesn't mean that this is going to be like religious because if I wake up and it's my birthday, like it was this Monday, I wasn't going to do motivation. I was going to be like, yo, it's my birthday. You know what I mean? So it's just to just, you know, mm -hmm. give you ideas of how I feel like this helps my, my wheels turn. So on Mondays, I do mindset yeah. or motivation. On Tuesdays, I love to do transformation because people, people are visual. When they see, you know, transformations, even if they're small changes, there's people out there that are going to be like, yes, I relate to that. That's what my body looks like. That's where I'm at. So do different type of transformations. Not only you, just do different. Sister coaches from your team, from anywhere, because there's all types of different types of transformations. And you could even do transformations of mindset. If you've overcome emotional eating, anxiety, stress eating, all those things. You can talk about that too. You could do a face-to-face -face transformation. I mean, I've done even glutes because when I was doing any day obsession, it was, I mean, my, I had to pick up my job. When I looked at my pictures, my brother was the one that was like, damn, what happened to you? I grew such a booty that I was like, I have to share this. And those things work because if there's somebody that wants to grow their glutes, I mean, hey, we are human, right? Then there's people that would reach out and be like, oh my gosh, what program is that? And I got people to do ADD obsession because of that. So don't think that, you know, specific transformations don't work. They do. Uh, Wednesdays, wisdom Wednesday. I, you know, words of wisdom. If I had a good conversation with a friend or I learned something from a mentor, I'm going to drop that gold and I'm going to be like, words of wisdom, this is driving me today. Lit a fire in my soul and share that people want to be helped and they come to you for the solution that you have. So if I'm sharing what is helping me more than likely, it's going to help them too. Thursdays is thankful Thursday, um, income, thankful for this community, for friendship, for health, for my faith, all the things Friday. I try to do feel good Friday because everybody's in that happy hour kind of mood it's the weekend so do something fun feel good friday saturdays i try to do social because usually saturday nights i'll go to dinner with my family so i always try to be very social on saturday and then on sundays um oh and by the way friday if you don't have anything feel good i've been doing success stories uh, anything okay. that has to do with like a success story that makes people feel good so whether it's a, an income you know success story or whatever it is that you could do and then Sunday, I try to do something regarding rest and rejuvenate. Um, Sundays for me are a, a lot, you know, to do with God. So I'll try to like, for the most part, you know, I'll try to think of like, like you know, what rejuvenated my soul today? You know, how did I rest? How did I do self-care today? Maybe I took a day to be with my family. I'll share about that. And again, doesn't mean that I do it religiously every single day. Like, I'm not going to lie. For the past two to three months, I've struggled with content um because i've been going through something really difficult with a friend of mine that just i felt like my soul turned off i'm not gonna lie like i'm gonna come clean becky knows i've been like oh my god my friend like i've struggled that relationship took such a toll on me the struggle that i feel like if somebody just went like this to me and turned off my soul and when i look at my instagram i'm like man i'm not posting like i used to and that's okay because I have to give myself grace, number one, and you got to show people that it's real. That things will happen in life where you'll be affected. But then there's days where I'm like high on life and I'm like, yes, I bring it. But the goal is to at least have that theme that can get your wheels turning. So when you're lacking that content, you could be like, yes, that's what I'm going to share today. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Lara, I know you had a question, right? No, but I, I kind of toying with one. I guess I, let me, I'll ask it. So I don't know if you saw the other day in the group I posted, I actually have two Instagram accounts. I don't use my Facebook anymore for the business because my entire job is on it. And I'm somewhat new there. It's been less than a year and I don't think we're allowed to have a side business. So 
I don't have them on Instagram. If they find my public page, whatever. But I have two Instagram accounts. One is a public page, which I used to use, stopped using and started using again. And then I have my private one, which is where most, I would say, majority of the people who follow me really know me. And so I've been posting more on that one because they kind of know a lot more about me. And so I feel that they have a more comfort but I'm trying to get my public one up just because, you know, I can reach out to people I don't know, Mm -hmm. but it's just really hard because there's not a lot of content and I don't want to like spend one day posting a lot. And then all of a sudden, you know, it looks weird that you have like 10 posts on the same day and the account looks too new. So I don't know what you suggest. You know, like when I go to somebody's page and I see they have like 10 p- pictures, I'm, I'm not motivated to follow them. But okay. if I see they have thousands of pictures, I'm like, oh, okay, this is somebody who posts often. But they're the they're going to be inspiration. What's the reason for the other one being private? My kids are on it. And my family. And I don't, if, like on my public one, I'll put my kids book from behind. So I don't really want them public. Okay, Lara, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna talk to you straight from the heart. Do you give me permission? Go and ahead. you you take it with however you want. Okay. So when I first started this business, I was private too. Okay, I was very afraid to share my kids, all the things. And my coach was like, "You're never gonna grow." Okay. And I was like, "Okay." And sure enough, I ran out of people. I completely ran out of people because it was the same people over and over. And I got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I cannot live in fear. We are all, you know, exposing our kids in one way or another. If I go on a walk with my kids, my neighbors are going to be exposed to my kids, right? Kids are alone in school. They're exposed there to other parents. You go to the mall. They're exposed there to adults. You go to a restaurant. They're exposed there to adults. What I found was that when you intertwine your family with your business, you're more successful. Why? Because you're inspiring people to do Beachbody because Beachbody enhances your life. Beachbody is not your life. Beachbody enhances your life. Mm -hmm. So when I show people that my kids work out with me sometimes, You don't think that I inspire moms that are like, damn, man, she's gifting them with the gift of health. She's gifting them with the knowledge that self-care is critical. She's gifting them with the fact that they're bonding together and they're not sitting watching video games all day. She is being active with them and they're there working out. It might not be every day, but I'm inspiring them. Like my 13-year-old yesterday, I came home and I caught him working out alone in the garage doing lift four and I'm like, what and that's amazing because he will grow to know that taking care of your body and your health is critical right then when i share that i go on day night with my husband i know i'm inspiring other women there to be like yes i need to i need that day night work on your marriage because you know what happy marriage happy family happy mommy happy kiddos happy wife happy husband it's all ripple effect. I remember when I joined this business too, I remember looking at my coach and she would post that she would go on day nights with her husband. And I would be like, oh my gosh, I need that because my marriage had just become this line that everything was my little kids, the kids, the crying, the depression, the I wasn't sleeping. I wanted what she had and that's what got me to join. So when you share in one page, marriage life, mommy life, uh, fitness life, community. I didn't, I felt like if I didn't have a tribe and now I have this gigantic tribe and I'm thriving because of these women, these women are pouring into me every day. That makes me become a better version of Susie. And I know that people have joined me because of community. So when you share that aspect, you're intertwining beach body into your life you're going to take your business to a whole nother level yeah 
when I was when I started too, I put I, on Facebook. I put some albums private. It, it's the what we talked about last week with the one of the assignments was social. The first one of the social medias, and it's the it, beach body is only twenty percent of what we should be sharing, and everything else is our true lives. So that's something you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make a decision on because um, people don't want just to see the fitness and nutrition. They want they want to see it all. So how do I build that public page? And because I mean, I'm willing to use it more and put more on it. But how do I build it without it looking obviously built? You know, like the, the stories no, every day is one time. thing. Okay, that takes time. I would just use the other one. That's my opinion. Yeah. Why restart something when you already have one? You know, I would, yeah, I would stay, um, decide on a page, whatever it is, it's your decision, but whatever, yeah. and I would, I agree with Becky, I would stay on the other page, whatever page you're going to do though, make sure that you look into, if you can be posting all the time, like constantly, meaning like consecutively, look into an app that helps you post at certain times so that if you don't want to do everything like 10 posts in one day, you'll have one to two a day, you know, or, or take the time to like, maybe on the weekend, plan them, put them in your notes. And all you got to do is copy and paste. Guys, we all have time to go to the bathroom literally by ourselves and be like, Oh my God, let me post really quick. You know what I mean? So just post morning and night if you feel comfortable, or even if you're going to do just once a day, but get in the, to the habit of that consistency. And if you're going to do it, like do it, like if you're going to pick whatever page you pick, just, you know, focus on that one and make it great. Make it great. You know what I mean? That's what, that's my best advice. Whatever page you're going to use, focus on that, stick to that, and make it great. Okay. Does that, does that help you? Yeah. It does. So look into scheduling apps, you know, look into the consistency. How much do you want to post? Maybe take some time and build your content and then try to do it. And when you start building, believe me, and you start connecting with people in seven days, you're going to see your numbers go up. People are going to engage with you. Make sure to add like a poll every day, you know, show other people, Hey, I see you. They're going to come back and, and say the same thing. I see you. So stick to it consistently seven days, take the time, five, 10 minutes where you could just concentrate on your page and really work on it. And you're going to see that you're going to, okay. you're going to build it Lara. In, in 30 days, listen, your business can change drastically. You know, you might see that page like that, but build it, focus on it, make it great. And you're, you, you'll get, you'll get it. Okay. Longevity. Remember, longevity in this business. It's not going to happen overnight. All right. All right. Well, guys, um, we have 30 day breakaway coming. So I would focus on talking about that now. Um, I did buy the stories from what is it, Pixel and Hue? They have some stories that were like nine dollars. Um, that's something worth looking into because you know I'm not creative, so I'm not gonna waste time creating stories and stuff like that. But now is the time to you know start talking to the people that you know that run, people who've maybe run and failed, you know, people that need would love to experience something different, brand new start inviting to that um, because the, you know what, I don't know if we talked about it here, but it's the wording for next week is, you know, join my VIP experience, um, get that coaching word, diffuse that word so that people don't think that they got to coach people through this. They're doing it for the discount. They're doing it as an investment in their health long-term to end this year strong. Um, and you can change everything this week coming up but you have to do the work now. You have to start laying the groundwork. Can't wait till Monday. And, guys, and my sister said it the other day on the call. That it's just, it just, it be, don't think that the launch is just Monday. No, right. the launch is, it, it's for weeks to come. We have the coach launch, then we have the customer launch. It's all of October and beyond. So if you don't have like a bazillion sales on Monday, don't think that you failed. There's right. Tuesday and there's Wednesday and there's Thursday and the whole month of October to get people excited about 30 day breakaway. But you know, my advice to you is start talking about it now. Yes. Why you want to do it, why you think it's exciting. Maybe do the sample workout, talk about it, you know, and, and start reaching out to your people. 
I Susie, I wanna I wanna ask something. Yes. Um, I I'm starting a group for new um with new females that I, that they join me. Okay. And I'm starting the 21 day fix because as you know, I guess I I I personally started with that, and I think that's a very good program for beginners intro, introducing them to uh, nutrition. Also, I have on the other side. Um, people that they want to join or they want to try the 30 day breakaway. So I need to learn. I'm still thinking how to do it. Of course, I'm going to have to do both of them. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out how to do it. If you guys could give me any tips because I have the 21 day fix group for my beginners. And I also have other ones that they're also into the nutrition and fitness, but they want to also do the 30 day breakaway. So I'm, I, I'm not sure how to do it. <laughs> Okay, so you can do two programs at once. No, I don't recommend do that two. at all. No, you don't have to do two programs. You've no. already done it. You just talk about it. Right. So yeah. you could either just do but I'm saying, like, I wanted to do it with them, with the, with the, new, with the new girls that they're going to do it. I wanted to, you know, do it with them also. But I also don't want to leave alone the other group, which is doing the 30-day run, which I don't know. I think 30-day breakaway is a better decision. I think so, too. You've already because... done 21-day fix. That's like then that's old news. You have to do what's relevant now so that you can be able to talk about it to new people. I remember, Brenda, that the nutrition program of 30 Day Breakaway is going to be the same as 21 Day Fix. Mm -hmm. It's portion control yeah. or picking to be mindset. So yeah. you could run two challenge groups. If Let's say if you have two groups on bod groups and you want to run them both, you can. Just whatever program you're going to stick to, when you take your sweaty selfie, post them on both groups. And that way you're not leaving anyone alone. You're staying in phase one. You're showing that you're doing the things, but you've got to pick one program. And I would recommend doing 30 day breakaway because it's the new thing. And everybody's going to be like, yes, I want to jump on that. There's tons of people that have already done 21 day fix. So you want to try to get new, you know, people to this new program. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I was, I was thinking, okay, maybe in the mornings I'm going to do my morning run, my morning run when I go um, early, you know, do the, my, my 15 minutes with the weights and then, you know, take the rest uh, uh, running. And then later in the afternoon, then I do the 21 day fix, which is 30 minutes um, workout. I mean, you I was thinking do that, to do that. But just know that you're, you're, you're showing people that then the 30 day breakaway program is not enough. You're yeah. showing that people then have to do mm -hmm. two workouts, right? to achieve the results. So, I mean, I know that you want to get rid of your baby weight. And if you want to talk yeah. about, you know, that, that, you know, you're, you're aiming for that, but I, Brenda, I will be honest and I would recommend trusting the program with the 30 minutes that, um, uh, you know, this trainer Idalis is going to bring us is going to be more than enough. You're getting the weight aspect. You're getting the cardio with the running, with the running comes a lot of mind work. You're going to be thriving. You're going to feel runners high. And that alone is an inspired mommies. Trust me. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Alyssa, did you have a question? I saw that you were going to unmute, right? Yeah, I can't remember it. <laughs> oh, right. I saw that you were, okay. you're, you're, and I'm like, oh, she had a question. And I just want to make sure that when you're done, you're answered, your questions are answered. I think actually it was kind of similar to that. Um, just I wanted to get your guys' recommendation on when there is something like a new program coming out, like 30 Day Breakaway. Um, so I just ended the regular MBF and I was going to jump right into the MBF Advanced. But would you guys recommend, since uh, 30 Day Breakaway is what's new, what's relevant right now, kind of the excitement and the hype is around that, to maybe go with that instead and and push the MBF advanced to just another time. Okay, so since the coach, okay, so they're both actually relevant right now because okay. um, MBF is still on VIP access. Like you still have to buy, sell it. You, they don't just okay. get it with BLD. So you can technically, do, it's only three weeks. You can do yeah. it, MBFA. That way people know that you started, you finished. I, I'm, I'm a big believer in you, you finish what you start. Um, and remember you have then the customer launch coming after, so you can technically 
Um, you can still be promoting MBF. You can promote 30 day breakaway, but you say, look, I'm doing it after I finish. And then you create a group for the, for, you know, after the three week period. And you get, and if people okay. don't want to sign up as a coach to get the, the VIP access to it, then you can start navigating those conversations and get them ready to start with you when you start 30 day breakaway. That's my, I mean, okay. I think okay. it's, it's a huge um, benefit to showing people that you're going to finish what you start. Okay. Because that's what we want our customers to do. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Because we're at the hour mark. Nara? No. No? Okay. But um, I just know like guys right now, you know, we're, that's it. We're in the fourth quarter. Now is the time. So double down. Um, don't get into the habit of taking your foot off the gas now. Now is not the time to take your foot off the gas. I know that the holidays are coming and, you know, a lot of people will be distracted, but there's still people looking to get in shape no matter of when, uh, what time of year it is. All the work that you put in now, the, the, the conversations, the invites, the, you know, all the things, of, the activities that we talked about today with the planner, all that work that you do now, even if it doesn't come to fruition in the fourth quarter, remember that we're setting ourselves up for a strong start in January. So don't take your foot off the gas now. Our team still is looking to do big things. We still have um, lots of time to advance in rank, to hit diamond, to hit success club, to do all the things. There's still plenty of time. We have October, November, December. We have three full months to make shit happen. So don't get into the habit of being like, oh, it's the fourth quarter. I'm going on vacation. No, because then January comes. And when you want to restart your business, you have to put all this effort once again to restarting the business, gaining momentum is hard. So don't take, don't lose momentum right now. Remember the prize is the focus is nine week control freak is coming in January. We're going to, or December, that's another huge launch. And you're going to want people to buy into that when that comes. So that means you have to be super consistent right now. So get outside your comfort zone, do the things that make you uncomfortable, talk to people with the hopes that when, you know, this, 2021 come, rolls around, people are going to remember you because you reached out to them, you know, in the fall and they weren't ready, but now they're ready because everybody seems to be ready in January. Don't disappear. <laughs> Don't disappear. Don't disappear. They're going to remember me. They're going to remember Susie because we show up every day. So don't stop showing up. And that's all. That's all I got for you today. All right. Let's take a picture before we log off. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. There she is. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. All, All right, right, guys. I will post the recording. I'm going to get it uploaded now, and then you guys can go back and listen to it. But remember, if you can this weekend, take some time and watch that Shakeology video. All right? All right, girls. Thank Have you. a great weekend. Thank oh, you. and share, I'm going to post Thank it in my group. Share your goals. I want to know what your goals are for October. Yes. All right, Bye, guys. guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.